Jackie, the Biden administration is preparing to reinstate that Trump-era Remain in Mexico policy after being ordered by a court to do so. For more on the border, we're joined now by Republican Congressman from Texas, a member of the House Appropriations Committee, Tony Gonzalez. Congressman, before we get into the border, I do want to give you just uh, a moment, an opportunity to to weigh in, to react to this tragic ambush on the three Texas constable deputies, one of whom we know has lost their life this morning. Congressman? Yeah, no, my heart goes out to the law enforcement officers here in Texas that are doing everything they can to keep our community safe. What I'd like to see from the Biden uh, administration and his speech here shortly is the, the president be crystal clear that America is behind law enforcement offers, officers and to be crystal clear that we will apprehend the people responsible for this and they will be brought to justice, full justice, and we will seek the death penalty for those that have killed innocent police officers. It needs to be that clean a speech uh, you know, this rhetoric of encouraging anti-law enforcement uh, rhetoric to be spewed by, by Democrats in particular is become deadly. Such an important point, Congressman, because as we now turn the conversation to the border, so many of the agents, men and women working around the clock, overwhelmed on the border, feel some uh, loss of confidence with this administration, with the decisions they've made. Now, when I have talked to agents, they do tell me that if Remain in Mexico is reinstated as the court has ordered the administration to do so, it may help. Your thought? Yeah, no, myself and, and many of my Republican colleagues have been pushing to uh, to reinstate the Trump policies at work. The Remain in Mexico policy works. It's encouraging to see this administration start to, to, to go down that route. We have to hold them accountable. And, you know, I'm not stopping until I see that policy get reinstated. What I will say is on the border, the cartels are controlling everything and it has become pure chaos. On the surface, you're seeing the migrant situation, but underneath the surface, you're seeing this deadly, uh, this deadly uh, area that encourages terrorism, that encourages uh, uh, these cartels that are very sophisticated. They're working with, with uh, cryptocurrency. They're, they are exploiting our, our border at all levels and all facets. It's not just the migrants that we see on the surface. You wrote an important op-ed in the Hill newspaper this past week about cartels and cryptocurrency. Is it your view then that the cartels are really stronger than they've ever been and only growing? These cartels are extremely sophisticated and they pose a danger far more than what we've seen on the surface. They pose a danger utilizing these cryptocurrencies that are essentially unregulated are a direct attack against the US dollar. This is a battle that the, Uni the United States is in a battle with these cartels. And the bottom line is we are losing. And it's up to the Biden administration to not only gain hold of the southern border to protect innocent uh, people that live along the border, but also protect our financial institutions and other things as these cartels continue to uh, become more sophisticated. You know, imagine uh, instead of coming over with a backpack full of cash, imagine you come over with a thumb drive filled with a with full of uh, cryptocurrency. And Congressman, as we look at live images from our Fox flight team of La Jolla, Texas, part of the ground zero in the RGV, the heaviest areas not far uh, from where you are on the border as well. But I went this past week to Panama, down to the country of Panama, all the way down to the Darien Gap jungle, the densest jungle uh, on earth, where we are seeing tens of thousands particularly Haitian migrants coming through there. The cartel has a virtual pipeline that runs from South America all the way across our border. And you were able to speak with the foreign minister of Panama, Erica Muinez, uh, when she came to Washington, somewhat, it sounds like, desperate for some help from the administration. What did she tell you? Yeah, that's right. I met with the foreign minister a little over two weeks ago, and uh, and she was really sounding the alarm on uh, on what is happening there in Panama. You know, uh, one thing is they've they've encountered over eight eight uh, eighty thousand migrants. There's more on the way. They've encountered many folks that are associated with terrorism. Once again, this is a direct threat to the United States, and, and these folks don't just arrive at our southern border. It is happening well in advance. 
Uh, what we saw in Del Rio weeks ago, we will see over and over again unless something happens. I appreciate you going down to the Darien Gap and covering it firsthand. You know, historically, those numbers around 8,000 uh, migrants pass through there a year. That number is 10 times as much and only getting worse. This administration has to act, and it has to act now. It does indeed, and we're out of time. i got to let you go, but I was trying to find out when I got back last night if anything had changed on those spending negotiations on Capitol Hill. Just 10 seconds. Do you have an insight on where we are? Spending is out of control. When you're negotiating from $3.5 trillion to $1 trillion, it's already a loser all the way around. Inflation is, continues to spiral out of control. Congressman Tony Gonzalez, thank you for taking time. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks, Riff.